And when Jesus came out of that Jordan River, the Bible says, like a dove, the spirit of the Lord descended upon him. And God spoke from heaven and said, this is my beloved son. Oh, don't forget that. I'm going to say that again here in a minute. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. And Jesus comes out of the Jordan River, goes into the wilderness to be tempted, comes out of the wilderness in the power of the spirit and shows us what a down payment looks like. <laughs> he, he came to show us what is possible to have somebody who is born of the spirit and filled with the spirit as a man walking around on earth. My God, and the Bible says, and we beheld the glory. All oh, Jesus comes into the earth realm walking around with the nature of God. But then he has the power of God through the Holy Spirit, and we see the marriage of the identity, authority, and ability of God all functioning in one man in the earth realm. Oh, I want to rewind the tape and say that again. When we're looking at Jesus, we're seeing the identity, the authority, and the ability of God functioning through a man in the earth realm. And the Bible says he walks around here demonstrating what it is like to see what a down payment looks like in the earth realm. And your Bible declares, but this was not his assignment. You say, now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, wait, Isaac Petrie, what do you mean? <laughs> Jesus Christ did not come to earth to merely show us who we were. He did not come to earth to merely show you who he was. The Bible declares that Jesus Christ wasn't even the full mystery that God wanted revealed in the earth. While men were looking at him and marveling at him, the Bible says the whole mystery that was hidden from the ages in Colossians chapter number one was not just God and the spirit of God walking around in Christ Jesus. The Bible says the mystery is actually going to be Christ in you. That is going to be the real mystery, not how God got himself in Jesus, but how is this Jesus going to get himself in you? That's what he came to do. He came to show you a foretaste and a glimpse of what you and I are about to be. And Jesus did not come. Uh, I'm sorry. Let me calm down. I, I, gotta, I can't calm down. It's Pentecost Sunday. Jesus came to show you the works that I'm doing, you are about to do. The mind that you see me functioning in, you are about to have it. The power that you see me mantled with, you are about to have it. Because he did not come to have it for himself. He came so he could get it for you and me. Oh, somebody lift your hands. I can't see you, but I believe you shouting right now. And if you ain't, you ought to be. <laughs> and so your Bible declares, whew, my God in heaven, I feel the anointing. Your Bible declares that when Jesus went to the cross. What are you doing, Jesus? Jesus is about to pay the price for spiritual debt. So now you got to understand this dimension of the resurrection to understand the dimension of this fulfilling of the down payment of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is coming to deal with with the condition of spiritual death. In other words, Jesus is coming 
to bring life back to dead spirits. And this is what Satan didn't know. Had the princes of this world known, they would not have crucified him. <laughs> Had they known that it was a spiritual operation, they would have never killed him. Because he has to come and pay the price for spiritual death that was released upon all men through Adam. One man caused our spirits to die. And one man is about to bring them back to life. And when Jesus is on the cross and he says, Father, into thine hands, I commend my spirit. And he gives up the ghost. The Bible says he who knew no sin became sin for us so that we could become the righteousness of God. What happened on the cross? He exchanged his nature for ours. On the cross, he became spiritually dead. He did it. Don't be, don't be sad about it because he did it so that he could die. <laughs> because if he hadn't have took on sin, there's no way he could have died. Because the wages of sin is death. And because he knew no sin, death couldn't touch him. Physical death couldn't touch him. That's why they tried to throw him off of a cliff and he passed through the midst of them. <laughs> that nothing could stop him. Nothing could touch him because he had no sin in him. But on the cross, he became sin, which means his spirit literally died. He took on the nature of all of the things that were lodged inside of us by spiritual death. And Jesus died on that cross as a sinner. He didn't commit sin. He took up on him sin. And when you die from spiritual death, you are separated from God. And he did that so he could get to hell. <laughs> oh, he did. He did it. He did it. He did it so he could get into the underworld because it was there that God was about to reveal something that nobody had ever seen in the history of humanity. You are about to experience a dead spirit come back to life. See, this is what the resurrection of Jesus is about. It is, it is not that he came back to life physically. Many people had did that. You, you had the widow's um, son in the Bible. You, 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 you had the man that was thrown in the cave with Elisha's dead bones. Now, if I'm going to have a resurrection, if I'm going to have an exciting resurrection, I, I, that, that's an exciting resurrection to me, to have somebody thrown into a cave, hit a man's bones, and comes back to life. That's a resurrection. If we're talking physical resurrection, Jesus' resurrection was a little boring. Because, I mean, take Lazarus. Lazarus had Jesus beat by one day. The Bible says he was four days dead and stinking if we're talking about physical. And then God spoke, Lazarus come forth. And after four days, he comes hopping out the grave. <laughs> that is a physical resurrection. But Jesus' resurrection was different because all of them died physically and they were raised again physically. But Jesus' death was a spiritual death and nobody had ever come back from spiritual death. That's why Satan thought he had a grip on humanity because as long as humanity's spirits were dead, Satan could dominate them. And death had reigned in every man, nobody had ever seen spiritual death defeated. Once a man died spiritually, we never came back to life again. But Jesus on that cross takes on sin, dies spiritually, goes into hell. Now his body is still in Joseph's borrowed tomb, but his spirit is in the underworld where he is separated from God because when you're spiritually dead, you have no 
access to the presence of God. I'm talking about the resurrection, y'all. And right there after three days and three nights when the father declared that the price was paid. Somebody lift your hands and shout because it is there that, that we, we saw something happen, happen that had never happened. happened. Death was undefeated. But in that moment, Jesus, right in the middle of hell's kitchen, if you excuse me, was born again. And we saw the first resurrection from the dead, we saw a spiritual dead man come back to life again. And Satan says, what in the world just happened? I've seen men come back to life physically, but I've never seen a spirit regenerated. I've never seen somebody go from spiritual death to spiritual life. I've never seen somebody lose the DNA of God and get it back. And that's what separated Jesus' resurrection from every other resurrection. He brought my spirit back to life. Oh, somebody shout, he brought my spirit back to life. He brought my spirit back. He brought it back from spiritual death, which means when Jesus got born again. That's why the Bible calls him the firstborn from the dead. Now you know what we're talking about. He wasn't the firstborn physically from the dead. Many had been raised from the dead. He was the first person ever born again spiritually. <laughs>